What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through today's Friday NBA slate. Excuse me. Um, that was a fun. I had a really fun Thanksgiving. Hope everybody else did as well. I also uh, did not do well in in football. Um, hang on, hang on one second. You got you got to pause for one second. All right. Sorry about that, guys. We're back. And uh, yeah, I just was saying a uh, really nice Thanksgiving, big family thing. And uh, I, but not, no good for me DFS wise. Sheets, how did you do? And then uh, how was nah, just kind years? of a kind of a slow grind into minus 25 percent on each slate. Uh, just that's. <laughs> Yeah, it was a weird, weird football games. I felt like it was kind of, kind of duddy for me. At least nothing that I really wanted to happen. I mean, I, I thought, I thought, I thought I was onto something when I had, you know, I had, I had, you know, a decent amount of Isaiah McKenzie. I thought he'd be popular. I had like twenty five percent of him. Over, it was like seventeen percent more in the field. Yeah. But then you know, you got to get everything perfect, you know, and it just doesn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, it didn't quite, mer- didn't quite work out for me. That's the best I can describe it. Yeah, I, I I missed the other ones. I did watch a little bit of of when I could of a couple of the games, but yeah, it's uh it was a, it was not not the best. Um, but we're on to another giant, ridiculous size basketball slate, and uh, let's figure out how we're gonna do this because this is uh, I actually think that it's pretty obvious. I've got a list of only like sixteen players that I'm thinking about playing. Oh my um, god, really? Yeah, I mean this. I could I could get way further into it. I'm probably only going to play one lineup, so maybe that's what's sort of you know getting me that getting me there. But okay. uh, yeah, so that, that that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, um, sometimes you know when when you when the slate is so big, you play one lineup or, or a few a handful of lineups. It just it just solves a lot of your problems. You know what I mean? Like because you're like, boy, I wish I could play this guy, but you know, I don't want to play one one lineup, so I can't play everybody. You know, where if you're playing like 25 lineups or something like that. Then you start thinking like, oh my God, I can't not have this guy. I can't not have this guy. I can't not have that guy. And you're yeah, playing absolutely. just a handful. You, you you resign yourself to realize, and you know what? I have to make, I have to prioritize somewhere. And that's just the way it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, totally agree. So let's pull up your screen and we'll go game by game and do our best to try to break this stuff down. Yeah. Um, so. Because I, I, I mean, I do think it's interesting. It's just, you can basically get different anyway. I mean, because you're going to have a weird amount of chalk as of right now. And again, there's probably going to be more news later because there tends to be, although they did have a day off for Thanksgiving yesterday, but we'll go game by game and do our best to, to get it straightened out. So let's talk about Philadelphia, Orlando. Um, look, I have no problem going right back to shake Milton. Um, I just don't think it's an overwhelming priority for me. Um, I think that like, I look at shake Milton and, well, I think he's a better play than than I'll take a guy in the same price range in than than Clay. Like I think he gets thirty five more often here. I do think Clay's got a pretty big ceiling. Plays in a later game, so that's sort of the way I'm weighing Milton. I have him as my my only real high interest. He put a forty six in a great game the other day. This is another good matchup, and uh, that's pretty much all I have for this game. Is uh, just Jake Milton. How about you? Um, what are the? I mean, we have to talk about this again. What are the? Uh... What are the prices on these on these centers, and what do you want to do with them? They're too expensive. Well, not too expensive. I mean, they're forty nine hundred and they're forty eight hundred. There's just better value on the slate, I feel like. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't really see the need to play either of them. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. Um, some of these other prices kind of got moved up a little bit, but I think Shake Milton is is still you know, obviously he's not as big of a smash as he was, you know, whatever at, at cheaper prices, right? But um. And the total is a little bit fishy, um, which is obviously why he's not that you know not projecting all that great. But uh, yeah, he's my favorite play from Philly, and I'm really not getting, I don't think, to too much uh, too much Orlando at all. No, I I hear you. Um, if I was playing 150, I might include a tiny bit of Corkmaz. I'll just throw that out there, but I'm not playing 150. Because what's uh, his name is out too today, right? Isn't um, Thibel? Thibel is yeah, but he hasn't been playing much anyway. But still, I mean. There, there will be minutes from from some of the for some of these guys off the bench, but I, I just think there's too much good value later on to to mess with it really. But I do like Milton, um, and and I and I have no, I'm not going to fault anybody who wants to play DeAnthony Milton. I think that's fine. It feels like a five X type of play. Um, I don't think I want to go Tobias Harris, but fine. So yeah, I just think that this mostly is going to be Milton and, or nothing else for me. All right. Yeah. Portland in New York, uh, in New York City. So yeah, so Portland, New York. The I, I got a little bit of it the other day, and it wasn't like a, a play you needed to have or a play you didn't need to have. But I liked um, I like Justice Winslow here. He ranks a little bit below some of the other values for me. 
but I think he's definitely in play. I also like Anthony Simons a lot, and I think his ownership might might stay low. Um, they had some blow. They when did they get? Was it a blowout that they had? I'm trying to remember the other day. This is what happens. My Thanksgiving fog. Um, yeah, they got smashed by by Cleveland. It's a tough matchup. I, I think this is a good a good bounce back spot for for Simons, and I like him to to have a a big game here. So I actually think that Simons is a guy who I'm definitely considering using. Um, uh, Winslow again, just I like I think he's I think it's good good enough value. I think he is going to be in the low twenties most of the time here. But for me, it's uh, it's mostly going to be Anthony Simons in this game, and that's pretty much it. How about you? Yeah, uh, current look, I don't really get to too much of Simons, but I am definitely seeing the uh, Justice Winslow play. Uh, I think by the end of the day, he's going to be you know not the greatest value, and even right now, I have him, I have a, I have him below a couple of guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I have him below one guy I literally never heard of. And we'll get to him later, I guess. Um, but so yeah, I mean Winslow at forty one hundred. He's he never. I don't know. He, he he haven't really cracked his results in the last like year or so. But he never seemed to be that guy with the ceiling, as far as my 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 perception of him. But maybe my perception is off. Um, uh, and any comments on that? Is he a guy that can like put up forty? I mean, or is he like a guy that's going to be? I think you're probably getting low thirties at as a as a more of a realistic ceiling. But I think that. They they That's do turn nice. over a lot of the offense to him, and he's you know I think he has the best assist rate if I'm not mistaken on um, on their team when there's no Lillard. Um, well, right forget the he, forget I, the no Lillard thing. Also, remember also uh, uh, is that Eubanks is questionable for this game. Um, yeah, and and if you and if Eubanks sits, then then you know then we have to really think about playing Nurkic, and then I think I Winslow's probably going to get some extra minutes as well. So so yeah, that that was more of what I was kind of like thinking about. Uh, Winslow and and yeah and if Eubanks is out I mean you you have to that you don't have to but Nurkic even at 6800 is very very reasonable right yeah and he's uh, in, I mean he's only 6100 on FanDuel so wow. um there's a there's definitely an argument for playing him here I, I agree with that point um yeah I think that's actually not 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 the worst idea in the world to to give him a shot especially if there's no Eubanks because they do like to play Eubanks like 20 minutes and that's the only been the been the major flaw for Nurkic is losing some some time this this year. So, all right, um, nothing from your Knicks. No. All right, so let's move on. It's really interesting. There's only two games early on today, so you definitely can probably get some value by by waiting a little bit. Um, next up, we have uh, Sacramento Boston. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I mean we got a really big we got a really big total. A huge total. Um, go ahead, if go ahead, shoots. No, I mean, we got a really big total. Um, not a lot of value in this game, but 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 Tatum at 10-8. What I'm seeing here is a whole bunch of, like, guys over 10K that are playable. Um, it's very easy to and, do. And and he's one of them, you know. Uh, that's the best I'm going to that's the best I'm gonna say about that. And we'll get to others later. So I would definitely include him in the mix. Um, and then what I'd like to do is see if there's something – kind of high scoring on the other side of it that I could, that I could plow along. And it's the same thing. Like I, I didn't quite get to, um, um, uh, to, to Fox, but instinctively you'd think Fox would be the one to, to play, but I'm, I'm getting to more Sabonis as kind of like the run back in, in this spot. If I was going to play Tatum, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to, if I'm going to choose the 10 K guy, I, I'd rather have a guy from the other side. So I guess Sabonis at 9K alongside. Um, uh, boy, boy, 238 total in Boston. That, that's the effect that Sacramento has on these yeah. <laughs> on, on these teams, I suppose. Um, yeah. You like anybody else in this game besides those two? I don't like those. I, I don't like I, – I don't think I have any interest in like Sacramento. Oh, okay. Um, even with the large total, they play a lot of guys, and somebody probably gets there. It feels like you're guessing a guessing game, and it's a bad matchup. Uh, Malik Monk is probably a, a good, like, low own play um, just because the upside is always there for him. But I don't I don't even know that I'd want to do that. So I'm I'm probably off this game um, outside of I do think Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown is what you're you're prioritizing. I think Tatum is one. As of right now, I have him as the best spend up on the slate. Um, I think most people will as well. So I, I I think he's I think he's really solid, and I think that all the other guys get a boost. But the only other one that I would really consider, in addition to Tatum, would be Smart. But even that, I just feel 
just feel like there's better plays in the slate. Um, Smart versus uh, what's his name? Uh, Milton feels like um, I'd rather play Milton. So that's where I'm at for here. All right, let's talk about Washington and Miami who played. It feels like they've played every game. It's been Washington Miami. I don't understand. And you never exactly know who's going to be playing. Exactly. Um, but I think you'll have bodies available for 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 what it's worth. I think you're going to have um, probably – I'm discounting Haslam here. Uh, so I you still have 11 guys, though, that they could play. Um, and and uh, I think Kyle Lowry is in the mix. And I think that Bam is in the mix. Uh, not really interested in anything else. Yeah, I'm not even getting to anybody. Um, yeah, I think it's a little thin, probably. But 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 Lowry's right. You know, he's put up 70 and four. I mean, I know it was a weird situation, but in the one game, but he put up 42 the last time. I think he's okay. I don't think he's my favorite play in the world. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, like you're saying, it's uh, there's a couple of games coming later that that parrots seemingly all the value. Um, which is which is nice, you know, especially if you're only playing one lineup or a couple of lineups. Uh, mm-hmm. This is Washington Miami is just you know just the, the lowest total with no with no value, you know, whatever. Then you get to this game, which is it, it's 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 really tempting. Uh, the Oklahoma City Chicago game. Mm-hmm. I'm not really getting too much in terms of like actual plays. You know what I mean? As far as like values and stuff, but I would just love to play Shea and like. I don't know, either like Levine or DeRozan, you know what I mean? And just kind of hope this game just 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 destroys. I mean, it's, it's a 231 total um, and a close spread, which is usually a recipe for, for goodness. Um, so, and Shea is one of the guys that I mentioned who's you know, over 10K, who I think is pretty good. And ownership right now has it re- is really low. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to stay that way, but I'll just keep doing it with this guy. Um as far as which guy in Chicago again, I would I would I would force in Levine maybe, or maybe force in a DeRozan and play you know one lineup with one, one lineup with the other. If I'm playing like twenty or something like that, um, I kind of like that. As far as like straight value goes, I'm not really seeing too much there. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, I I don't mind. I, I think again though, like it's the same story. I I, I think that both Giddy, one of Giddy or or Shea usually is going to get there here. Um, last week, last the other day, it was it was Shea. Uh, I was giddy before that. Like, it's just one of these guys, it just seems like every game is going to, is going to have, you know, one of those six X type of games at, at a at reasonably high prices. So I, I'm definitely interested in, in he, both those guys. Um, we haven't had that really big Levine game in a while. Maybe this is a spot where he could actually get it going. Uh, I also think DeRozan is, is really uh, is like, is, is, is sort of back to playing like really, really well. And his assist rates really high. The usage is incredible. I, I mean, he's been over 34% usage in the last three games. That's a lot. <laughs> um, so it's, I, I think DeRozan would be my preferred guy here. Um, and I, and I think that if there was a matchup where Vucevic could really go nuts, this, this probably is a, is a pretty good bet for that. The guy who doesn't show up from a projection standpoint is Jeremiah Robinson Earl. And I'm just, you know, his minutes, they tend to be in flux a little bit, but like when he gets there, he puts up like 35, you know what I mean? Like, Right, he's got that in him. He put up thirty three the other day, anyway. Um, and and it's a pretty good matchup, so you can include him to the list of of just these other value plays that are just kind of interesting. But uh, as of right now, I would say Shea uh, or Giddy with with DeRozan on the other side, I think is probably my my preferred way, route to go. And I think it's a pretty good way to spend your money today because I think this game should be a good one. Um, total feel. I, I like the under for what it's worth, but I still think that this is a, a good pace game. Um, and, and, and by the way, guys, I'm going to throw out, I, I don't know how much of my post and stuff I'll, I'll get everything I have and I'll probably just post it in the discord and stuff today. Cause I'm going to be sort of scrambling around a little bit. Um, just got a lot of stuff going on over here. Um, anyway, just want to throw that out there. So let's talk about what do you got next? Uh, Memphis, New Orleans. Yeah. So Memphis, New Orleans, this is where you're getting at least at this early juncture, the, the top value on the slate. Um, so you have, uh, CJ McCollum is out um and you're getting a really really big projection out of jose alvarado mm-hmm. um pretty much across the board and I, I i have an average right now of 28 fantasy points at 3800 which is putting him about seven and a half x which is putting him at about 60 percent ownership i guess um it's usually the way it works um 
And that's, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a tough fade in a, a seven and a half X uh, point guard. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, let's see if there's anything else I'm really getting. Now, first of all, uh, as far as just regular plays, um, Ja is always a good low owned play, um, 10 seven. Um, I think it's very reasonable. And I wonder if there's not anything else on the New Orleans side we're supposed to be considering here. I, I don't see it right now. So I'm just kind of hoping other stuff pops that we can talk about. What do you think of Jose Alvarado? What do you think of anybody else on New Orleans? What do you think of anybody on Memphis? Um, well, I would say that on FanDuel, I probably am playing one of Nurk or jo- Joval. Joval's 5,600. I think he gets a boost with uh, McCollum out more than people think. He only played 26 minutes in the last game. He still put up 41 fantasy points. So I, I will say that those are my two FanDuel centers that would be Nurk or, or Joval. Um, Alvarado is kind of a guy who I'm just going to like make sure to play. Um, the weird part is he's not always, he's like, his usage is very sporadic and I don't know if he's like had like a 30 fantasy point. I don't think he's had one this season, but this is a pretty good situation. So I I'm on board with playing some Alvarado. Um, I just, it feels like a lot of ownership. That's the only thing I'm worried about a little bit. And I, and I have no problem with jaws, the run back. I prefer Tatum. But as a spend up, but I do think Ja would be right up there for me uh, after Tatum. Yep. And uh, we get the Zion Ja thing. Can we? Can we? Can we reach on this one? I mean, I know they beat the hell out of the Spurs. Zion was going to have like seventy five or eighty fantasy points in the last game. Um, there's better bigs to guard him here, but I, I think he might be figuring him like really figuring it out now. Like, um, and they, and they're going to run more through him. So I I do think Zion is in play. Uh, I actually think all the studs are in play for 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 New Orleans. Um, but my favorite would be, as of right now, Zion or Joe Val. Um, even in a tough matchup, uh, Joe Val back in Memphis, but Stephen Adams versus his former team, all that stuff happening. Um, that, that hasn't worked out well so far for Joe Val, but uh, I wouldn't mind taking a shot tonight. Multi right. Bucks are at home and they have Giannis in the game, and they're only a three point favorite. That's it's uh it's, yep. an inter- it's, an, it's an interesting state of affairs. Good for Cleveland, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, they're really good. Yep, they're really really good. Um, with respect to fantasy uh, in this game, um, there's again it's it's the same conversation, not even a conversation, the same observation. Every slate, I mean, you have Giannis who's twelve four, you know, and and the fact is is that he's not necessarily going to score more than the guys that are rated two K below him. Right. Um, and that's just the bottom line. Um, well, it's not the bottom line. I mean, he's going to be low owned, but I think these other guys are going to be low owned too. You know, so so mm-hmm. I don't uh, I don't really feel the need to play him. Um, what else? Uh, not not a lot. I mean, I'm really not getting much to anything. Like Giannis is going to show up in all my sheets as a you know obviously a play. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from that, I mean, I guess Darius Garland looks. I mean, okay. I don't know. I'm probably, I'm probably going to end up crossing this game off. Yeah. It's uh it's Donovan Mitchell or, or probably nothing else for me, to be honest with you. Um, uh, Mitchell has a ceiling and he's 9,300 against a team you can, sh- or 9,500 against a team you can shoot with. I, I just don't think I'm going to do anything with this one, particularly. I, he would be my favorite. Um, I, I just am not all that interested in this game. And I think they're both really, really good basketball teams that it's going to be a little bit of a slower pace um holiday takes away enough of the i mean he, t- he doesn't take any shots um but it, but he you know he had 11 assists in the last game so he takes away enough of Giannis's usage that i'm just gonna fade this game probably and hope it doesn't kill me all right brooklyn, brooklyn right. indiana is a 233 total at yep. a close game and nobody showing up in my sheets so to me that means that these are guys that are probably too expensive that we're supposed to be playing anyway okay um is this is this is this the day that i kind of alluded to a couple of days ago is this the day that Kyrie at zero percent ownership uh breaks the slate i don't know uh mm-hmm. i always have to, i always have to think about it if this is going to be the day um durant at 11 one is rating below like 10 other guys. Yep. Um, And yet he's going to be 2% owned as a result. 
And it's a 233, it's a, we reiterate, 233 total in a close game. And Indiana is not exactly, you know, the, the 89 Bulls defensively. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, uh, then on the Indiana side, again, Halliburton's kind of a tough click at 9,400. But Brooklyn is not the 89 <laughs> Bulls either, you know? Right. So, so uh, there, there's him. Um, I didn't quite think about the bigs uh, for Indiana, but you could try to talk me into them. I mean, I'm telling you, we're really going off my projection sheet to play guys in this game, but I, I just think we're supposed to. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I hear you. Uh, I have I have some interest in Halliburton. Um, you know, it's it's a good matchup. He's at, he basically averages 40, he averages what, 46 and a half fantasy points per game. Halliburton and Mitchell, I would say, are similar plays, but I think Halliburton is probably the one I would choose. Um, and I, I don't mind a Halliburton Kyrie mix. I think that's completely on the, on the table. Um, but again, probably not going to be my priority in one lineup, but I think that Halliburton at low ownership is definitely interesting in this spot. And I, the only thing I worry about the Kyrie thing. So that here's the thing with Simmons is because he pushes the ball up and sort of is an equal opportunity distributor. And he's, you know, got a really good assist rate. It's enough usage that takes away from from the upside for Kyrie and, and Durant for me to not be interested, except for that. I Like I said, I think Kyrie is going to score 50 real life points in a game in the not too distant future um, or close to it. And I think this uh, this would certainly be a candidate. So if you're going to play multiple lineups, I do think getting a, a, a Tyrese and Kyrie is, is completely, completely within uh, something I'd, I'd consider doing. I just I just have them individually rated way worse than some of the other guys around them. Uh, Atlanta and Houston, another one of these, you know, high total games. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of games like this today. Yep. And I will, uh, I, I think that all of these guys are, are good plays. I think Trey Young, I think John Collins, uh, in this matchup, uh, I think that you, you know, it's hard, hard to not have at least some interest in them. And I would even include DeJounte Murray if I was multi-entering, but none of them are making it as my first go around, but I think Trey is you know, certainly a guy I could get behind. I have no problem with it. I just like the other plays a little bit better than I like Trey. Clint Capella is going back to Houston. That's oh, Tari uh, Eason. I forgot to mention. I love Tari Eason. Well, yeah, I'm going to get to him. What I was going to say in, in, in full dramatic form um, uh, before bringing up uh, uh, Clint Capella is I was going to ask you, who is Tari Eason? That's Tari what I was gonna, awesome. just about to ask you. So and because, you know what's so funny, Sheets? When I looked at this slate, I was like, the first thing Sheets is going to ask me when we get to this game is going to be about who Tari Eason is. I knew it was Tari Eason is not, is not the guy who started for started for New England in the Super Bowl at quarterback. Okay, <laughs> that would be Tony Eason. Yeah, and Tari Eason is not Tony Eason's son or grandson. Um, mm -hmm. he's a guy who's forty one hundred or four K, who's projecting at almost six X. Who I don't know, and I figured I would ask you who he is. Yeah, he's a so he's a 17th overall pick in this year's draft. They really are high on him. A lot of people, a lot of really smart NBA guys said that it was a steal to get him at 17. Um, he's getting the minutes because they don't have the other bigs available. And uh, they're going to play he and Jabari as their bigs and play a little bit of a small lineup. I think that Tari Eason is a really, really strong play. And I think that if you're not playing him, I would play KJ Martin or Jabari Smith. That's the way I really think that you want to get the, get exposure to at least one of those guys and probably all your lineups or most of them. I, I don't think that they, they could, they, these guys could 10 X their salaries, not, not Jabari probably, but KJ Martin and Tari Eason have the ability to, especially Eason. So he's my number one play here. And I don't mind if you want to run Trey on the other side. Where was he? Cincinnati, Tari Eason. Okay. Cincinnati. And then he also played for LSU, I believe. I think he transferred. Yes, that's true. That is true. Um, yeah. So he's, 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 I mean, he's, he's, he's a good player. Like, but again, you, you have high risk rookies who sometimes are just going to be pulled out of games for doing the wrong thing at times. And in a spot where he's going to be this high owned, so you can decide to fade it. Personally, I have him as, as the, as the good value on this slate. So is uh, LeBron is supposed okay. to play. Well, we've heard this before. LeBron is supposed to play tonight. Is okay. that, what, that what you're going to talk about? I was, I was going to ask you that. Um, because you got the best player in fantasy right now on the Lakers. It's wild, and, uh, huh? How the time, how the times have changed. It's amazing, right? It's just amazing. And uh, 
whether LeBron comes back just kind of, in, you know, always impacts Anthony Davis's projection and his, his upside and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, it does say that he intends to play, but you know what? We was it the road the road to to ruin was paved with good intentions. You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but you know, we, we, the good thing is it's an eight o'clock game and not at ten thirty. Um, so we're, we'll have to wait and see um, if he plays. Uh, you know, I, I I threatened to do this the last time, and I don't know if I can do it this time. But I threatened to just say, you know, if LeBron plays, I'll just play AD anyway. Um, don't know if I can get away with it on this slate, though, um, with all the other 10K guys on on the board. Um, so I don't think I'll be able to get away with that. But I'll tell you this. If, in fact, LeBron's out again, then you can't give me any reason why Davis is any worse than any of the other guys in his match. So um, totally agree. We'll, see, we'll see where that goes. And I don't have anything on my board from San, San Antonio. I would go so far as to probably play Davis no matter what. Um, okay. All as right. as, the, as the other spend up, I think you can you can get two spend ups tonight. I have Davis and Tatum as the top ones. I don't care about what the projections say. Um, Davis is on another planet right now, and the what he's going to be able to do, like just the the rebounding, the shot blocking upside in this matchup, is just tremendous. Um, I think he should, I think his, his median score should be in the, the, the mid fifties, not in the low, the high forties. Uh, even if LeBron plays, I think that they're going to run things through Davis and it's not just about running things through him. Cause when you look at Davis, it's the usage has been great. Okay. So that's been a big uptick without LeBron, but on top of it, the, just the rebounding is, is if you're going to get 18 or 20 rebounds every game, you don't need to do everything else. And, and by the way, he's also getting a ton of blocks and I don't see that changing tonight. This is a great shot blocking and steel matchup against San Antonio. The, their size is, is, is not anything that I'm afraid of. I just really think it's a good spot for him. So I'm very high on Davis tonight. So I have a question. I, I want to talk about the Pistons for a little bit. Okay. Um, I want to talk about Marvin Bagley because we, we've talked about him before and and they, everybody that picks him up like likes him for some reason. Like they, they all say, "I'd be really into Marvin Bagley." Then they end up super talented him. guy, <laughs> right? Just so Detroit. Really so Detroit picked him up, and I just want to read you this line from from the last game. Okay, I, I want to show this. Yeah. So Jalen Duran was two for four from the field, seven rebounds. I mean, reasonable, right? But two for four from the field, seven rebounds, two blocks, two steals, four points. Okay, mm -hmm. seems all right. You know, whatever, two for one. Marvin Bagley in the same game was nine for 10 from the field, mm -hmm. six rebounds, two assists, two steals. And they had Bagley playing 21 minutes and Duran playing 27. I don't understand. Um, I, I just don't understand what they're, what they're, what, what the deal is with Marvin Bagley. They all love him and then they don't play. Um, and he even had a great game and didn't play. I, I don't exactly know what's going on. So you can comment that on the basketball perspective, but I do have Jalen Duran at 4,200 showing up as a play, you know, alongside of other just centers that I'm not going to play, like Andre Drummond at 4K, Looney at 4K. You know what I mean? Like all these guys at 4K. Um, but uh, I just I just found it interesting what was going on with, with – I don't even know what is, what is going on with these guys. Right. So I'm, I have no interest in pretty much anybody in there. And on the Phoenix side um, – I basically have Phoenix as a cross off today. Um, what do you got in this game? I'll tell you what, uh, first of all, it's credit to the Pistons. They're starting to actually play basketball. Um, weird how having veterans like Alec Burks coming in and playing actually makes a difference. Um, I, 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 the Bagley thing. So I, I'm looking at it right now and the other, the other night and they sort of just seem, it just seems to me they want to keep his minutes at a lower number and no matter what they want to try to get Duran 20 plus minutes, it feels like. Um, they seem, they, they really like Duran too. I mean, uh, he's, I mean, he's their, their first round pick this year and he's a guy who everybody's very, very high on too. Uh, their other first round pick other than Jaden Ivey. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not going to mess with it. That's, that's what I'm doing with it. Uh, it's a bad matchup. I am very impressed by what the Pistons have been able to do. I don't know that it's going to continue tonight and I'm probably just, uh, off this game for DFS purposes with the exception of, I think. The perception would be that Devin Booker is too expensive. We know he's got a crazy high ceiling and a good matchup. Sure. I think sure. that campaign is completely reasonable. 
Um, had a down game the last one against the Lakers. No problem. He could still put up in the high 40s, uh, low 50s. And I keep getting back to this. I never end up playing him. But I just it's just worth noting that Bridges has 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 sort of turned a little bit of a corner and as a fantasy producer and his price is starting to reflect it. I don't think I'm gonna get to him again today, but all of these guys are definitely interesting. And it feels like against the Pistons, maybe we should be doing something. Um, could this be the 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 DeAndre Ayton game? I mean, he's actually been better lately. I, I don't know. I just I'm it feels weird to me because that's what I've been just that's been the, the money maker for me is playing these sons, at least one of them in, in, in all these matchups. And on a day where they're going to have no ownership in a good matchup, it feels kind of wrong just to ignore them. But I, I just don't love anybody. I don't, you know what I mean? And I don't know. So may, maybe I talk myself into Booker by the end of the day. So Utah, Golden State, you know, one thing we didn't talk about, um, I guess we didn't have time. You know, the other day I almost broke the NBA slate, it almost broke State Kings because I was, I came in like 10th in the fadeaway, 10th and 11th yeah. with, 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 with some shots. And the, the reason why that happened was I had the freaking genius ceiling game in the same game from Malik Beasley, uh-huh. who scored 55 fantasy points. Thank you very much. Jeez. And Colin Sexton in the same lineup who scored 36 fantasy points. Okay. So the two of those guys yeah. were just doing great. Okay. Yeah. And they actually, I think I'm, Sexton, I think started, I think with Beasley's yeah. off the bench, whatever, but Beasley totally closed. Well, listen, if they're not going to let him close, considering what he was doing, then they, they're not human. Right. Like, and, and it was really funny. Like these guys, these guys were going, were going off. And then like down the stretch, I needed just a little bit more. The game was like a little out of hand. They were like, they were in the last two minutes, they were dead. And then, even though if Sexton and Beasley were doing great, then all of a sudden Clarkson decides now I'm just gonna start chucking shots up. Dude, come on, man. You know what I mean? Like you had your chance to break the slate. You're 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 dead. You know what I mean? Right. Let's let, let, let go to the guys that are actually been doing stuff. Yeah. There was like one like incredible sequence where I thought my I thought my, my life was stalling. And then you had Sexton with the assist to Beasley on a four-point play. I'm like, let's go. You know, those are those are always awesome, you know. Yeah. Um so in 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 uh, celebration of that, I will I will go back to Sexton. But you know the one thing about Sexton, I really didn't even know this. I should have known this. I just don't. Remember. I just I remember him from last year or two years ago being a guy who just shot the ball a lot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This guy can't shoot. Like like they they like I was watching. I'm like oh okay. They were backing off of him. They're like I dare you to shoot a three, and he would just brick them. I'm like, I, I guess he just, that's not the player he is, but he did have a, I think it was a career high almost an assist, or at least a season high of, mm-hmm. of 12 assists. And he was playing better. And if he starts again at 4,600, I'll keep doing it. So, so, so I'll, I'm in there and I got to say that it's, it's recency bias, whatever it is, but um, yeah, you want to bring Malik Beasley off the bench and let him get hot again. Why not? <laughs> so, 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 so I, I'm I'm kind of in there. Uh, Sexton projects well. Beasley not so much. But then there's a Linux who projects decently. Lowry has had a good season. I think this game is listen. It's a 200 million point total, right? Nine, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and and boy, I think I know uh, some guys in Golden State who I can play. I've heard of, I've heard of like this guy Curry. I know that I know that Mr. Bobby has been looking for Clay Thompson to win him a hundred thousand for the last like couple of weeks. Maybe I'll try to get on board with that, you know. So so maybe something like that is in order tonight. Yeah, I, I I'm with you. Um, I'm definitely playing Sexton in my main lineup as of right now, and okay. I have no problem with Beasley as a pivot. Like I think that's a really, it is recency bias. He still put up 36, 38, 55, and three out of the last four. Um, and his minutes are up in the 30 range rather than the low 20s like we saw early in the season, especially without, you know, uh, Conley in there. Um, Clarkson always worries me to take his teammates because he's just so willing to shoot a million times, like you said. Um, and, and, and I think people will even like Clarkson a little bit. I, I, I outside of Sexton don't have a ton of interest in everything here. Um, I, I think that, I think, I think, I think everybody else rates is fine, but I, I do think Olenek is probably someone I should do maybe a little bit more of a look at because Looney tends to stay near the basket. Olenek likes to shoot. 
Um, and getting some open looks for him, he tends to get going and certainly has a ceiling. So I, I don't mind those guys. And I, and Clay is my favorite run back there. Um, no issue with Curry, but I think I would prefer to play Clay at 5,800. And Curry could always go off, and this is a good matchup to do so. So, yeah, it really, it really is. is. I mean, Curry, yeah. listen, between Curry, Morant, not so much Shea, but but I'm just talking about matchups and stuff like that. Like John and and or Curry could both score seventy. Yeah, no time. Um, I agree. And uh, I mean, ask could other guys, but but I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I like Shea. Shea I, don't, I don't know. Like Shea's going to do fine. He's cheaper, so I guess you can give him a little bit of a break. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So you want to uh, go on yeah. to this nonsense at the end? So so I have. Uh, yeah, this is the game, I guess. I mean, I, I have Terrence. <laughs> Terrence Mann and Amir Coffey as like two of the top four point per dollar plays as of this time. Mm-hmm. And then I have Norman Powell in, in the 10th spot. Um, on the Denver side, you have Bones Highland is out. Um, Bruce Brown with a freaking triple double in 45 minutes in that game. You know what I mean? Uh, he was, he's, Listen, he's like you said, he's been doing it, man. <laughs> yeah, totally I don't know. Remember, remember, there was no Porter and Jamal Murray. I, I know. Yeah, uh, I get it. Um, but let's let's get back to basics. I think that um, I think that uh, Jokic is uh, extremely good, uh, extremely strong play. Um, he rates for me as the top as the top play, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. Um, and. I, I, I'm I'm very surprised that the line is this this low with all these guys out for the Clippers, but you know I guess Denver's no bargain either. Um, I don't know if Murray's back and and Jokic is back and Gordon's been playing pretty well. And you tell me if Porter Junior's back in as well. I mean, you would think that Denver should be favored by a little bit more here against Clippers with no players, but um, I don't know. Uh, you like anything else on the Clippers? You like? Uh, you want to go back to Marcus Morris? Or what do you like here? I think it's pretty – like, I actually agree with you about – it. Does it's a little surprising to see. I thought they'd be at least like five or six. They're only three-point favorites. Um, I person personally um, think that you have to play two Clippers tonight. Um, not you have to, but I'm going to. Um, also, you get the benefit of, of being the last game in case you get any other late news. And I, for me, those guys are going to be Terrence Mann, Coffey, or Powell. Those are my main ones. And I like all of them. Uh, Powell had a big game off the bench the other night. I don't mind that he's not starting. Um, it's weird to have a guy who, you know, starts when they're when they're at full strength and then not this. The Amir Coffey minutes are hard for me to figure out because, like, if, you really, if, if he's really going to play 30-plus minutes, he's 3,200. I don't really know how right. we're supposed to just ignore that. Like... Yeah, at I know. the same time, he's not like it doesn't look like that many people are going to play him because he is a very low usage guy. And, you know, Sabersim has him at 28 minutes tonight, mm-hmm. but he played 35 in the last game. Um, there was, you know, you could argue that it was a little bit of a blowout. I I, I don't know, man. I, I I think that I guess Powell and Coffey should should sort of take away from each other in some sense. But I, I'm kind of interested in all three of those guys. And right now I've got Coffey and man as the main ones. But yeah. it feels a little bit wrong to not have uh, to not have some Norman Powell. So I I'm, I think this is a game where you want to play two from the Clippers. I'm a little lower on Jokic with everybody back. His numbers drop pretty significantly. But again, I, I just it does feel weird that I'm suggesting at a very similar price point Anthony Davis over Jokic. <laughs> um, so I uh, I'm open to if, if anybody else wants to to go ahead and do it. I just personally don't have Jokic as a priority. It's just probably going to have fairly low ownership considering it's him and. Uh, it's it's just there's there's just too many balances to feed I guess but I even that I I don't know like I think it's really close between uh, Jokic and Davis and that's a big decision I'm gonna make I'm gonna have to come to because I do think that Man Coffee Powell two of those guys are going to be in my lineup so it would be nice to have that run back um, and I think you could even add a third if you want to uh, Marcus Morris I believe is still cheap on let me just double check that Fanduel didn't raise his price too much. Oh, no, they did actually 5,700 now. So he's probably a little bit less interesting than he was. Um, but yeah, I can get behind all, you know, the, the coffee Powell man situation. The problem with wall and Jackson just eating into each other is no fun. Um, 
so that's that's my only issue with them. I, you could you could definitely sell me on on Reggie Jackson as well, but I personally am more on the man coffee, uh, pal side. Let me let me summarize. My, I'll start summarizing this. Yeah, time. you want you want to summarize. <laughs> uh, for me, value for va- values first. Uh, Powell, Winslow, Shake Milton, Tarisen, Coffee, Sexton, Terrence Mann at the top would be Jose Alvarado. As far as like kind of like good good projection upside guys, I, I like Jokic, uh, Curry, uh, Shea, Tatum, and uh, I guess either Ja or Trey Young. But 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 if you're gonna play multiple lineups like more than twenty or even twenty, I, I really want to I think I think I'm just gonna start to just put Kyrie like in a lineup. You know what I mean? Just just one just in case, you know, and, mm-hmm. and or Durant, you know, one of, one of those two in these, in these, listen, it's two thirty three, and it's weird because it's probably like the fourth episode on the slate here. Um, but, uh, uh, actually that's not true. I mean, only, I think only the, the golden state game is a higher total. Um, so I, th- those would be my, my, my kind of tiny owned, uh, pivots off of all of that. Yeah. I, um, I think that, that that's reasonable. Um, what I've got the priorities for me being, uh, Alvarado Sexton, East, Sexton or Beasley, Eason or KJ Martin, then two of the three between Man, Coffee, and Powell as the values. Uh, Milton in the mid tier, uh, maybe Simons or Nurk, depending on like we like you said the Eubank situation. Um, I don't mind a Kyrie Halliburton, but the the priorities spend ups for me are Tatum and Davis, and it's pretty easy to get them in and leaves me in one weird spot that I can't quite seem to get past. And I I have seven. You know what I might do? I might skip Coffee and play Man. That'll that'll do it. I'm trying to build a lineup here. And um, be careful with the man thing because you may end up playing Trey Man instead of uh, in- instead of uh, 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 Terrence Man. They're the exact same price today, so just be careful with that one. Hey, tell, tell me more about the tell me more about the KJ Martin thing. So, so KJ Martin, as opposed to to the Tony Eason, to you know, whoever, um, Eason, yeah, is is it is it whoever starts or it doesn't matter or they should both start. Um, I like Eason better. That's just my personal take. Is I think okay, a better play. Okay, but um. Yeah, keep getting into a, a weird spot here. Like, I I would love to get to to where I had eight K left. Eight, I have eight. Keep having eight K left, but I would love it if it was eighty one because I kind of am interested in playing DeRozan as a third spend up in that Ooh. matchup. Um, I really think DeRozan. I mean, I don't. You know, I I don't exactly know why people are off of this. I mean, the guy has been going completely nuts. He's shooting the ball 24, 24, 30 times his last three games. Um, he's put up fifty nine, forty six, and forty eight. And it's a good matchup in a high paced game that you can run it back with Ja if you want to. But I'm trying to get to that. I have literally exactly 8K left or 7,400 left, depending on which which two clippers I use. And I can't seem to quite get to the plays that I really want because I would be good with uh, 7,600 Simons. I would be good with uh, a 70. What what was the next one for me? I guess I guess the the the, the most logical one is probably play Cameron Payne for me um, at 7,300 against Detroit, but. Um, what is Payne's projected ownership here today? Actually, I wanted to see that. Uh, nothing. Yeah, that. there's nothing. There's nothing happening with Phoenix, which is kind of weird because Devin. I mean, Cam Payne on a, a mon- monster slate the other day was just because of one bad game. He was like thirty percent owned, wasn't he? Like, it seems weird that no one's going to play he or Booker or Aiton, and I just think one of those guys is is probably going to six x at least, and they're at a reasonable price tag. All right, so that's what I've got. I'll be live at six. Uh, Sheets, are you going to be around? I will. Awesome. So we'll do a six live. Um, I'll try to get what I can in the Discord today up, and uh, let's uh, let's get after it. Let's make some money today, guys. It's Sunday at eleven a.m. too, right? Sunday at eleven a.m. Sounds good. All right. Good luck, everybody. Sheets, good talking to you, and we'll uh, see you later at six. All right, later.